Hi friends, in this tutorial series, we'll be implementing Spring Boot and Kubernetes examples. In previous tutorial, we deployed a Spring Boot application to Kubernetes pods. When we tried to access the application that was deployed to the Kubernetes pods, we were not able to access it using the curl command. In order to access this application deployed on Kubernetes pods, we'll need to write a service. So in this tutorial, we'll have a look at what is service and what are its various types. For this, I'll be taking reference of my website javainews.com. So go to DevOps. Kubernetes tutorials. The tutorial that we'll be implementing today is difference between cluster IP, node port and load balancer service. In a previous tutorial, we deployed the Spring Boot application to Kubernetes pod. So you can go through this tutorial here. We have the YouTube video. In this tutorial, we deployed the Spring Boot application to the Kubernetes pod. Also, once the deployment it was successful, we tried to access the deployed application using the curl command but we were not able to access it. So in order to access this deployed application, we'll need to write services. So in this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at what are services and why do we need it. In Kubernetes, services are a fundamental concept that allows applications to communicate with each other within the cluster and also from outside the cluster. Think of services as an abstraction layer that acts as a single entry point, providing a stable and reliable way for different components of our application to find and interact with each other. So let us have a look at the Kubernetes services in detail. So here we have the Kubernetes documentation which describes the Kubernetes services. Also here below they have given a sample configuration file that is needed for defining the service. Before we look in detail at this configuration file, let us go through the pod configuration file that we had written in the previous tutorial. So this was the pod configuration file that we made use of. So here we also had the API version v1 and then the kite pod and then the metadata which had the name of this pod. And finally we had the specification for this pod. So if you look at the uh, service configuration file, its structure is quite similar. Here also we have the API version which is v1. The kind instead of pod, it will be service. Then we have the metadata where we define the name of this service. Then we have the specification for this service. So here first we have the select attack. Now this is a very important tag. The select attack, it helps determine which pod application does this service represent. The key value pair that we define for this selector, it should match exactly with the key value pair that we define for the pod that we want the service to represent. To understand this better, let us go back to the pod configuration that we had written in the previous tutorial. So now suppose we want to develop a service so that the user, he can access this pod application. So for the service that we'll be developing, the selector tag, it will have the key value pair app colon boot hyphen jar. Now this particular key value pair, it should also be present in the pod configuration file for which we want the service to represent. So here in the metadata, we'll be having the labels and under the labels, we'll be having the same key value pair that is under the selector. So here we'll also be having app colon boot hyphen jar. So by this, we know that this service, it is representing this pod application. So if any request, it comes to this service, then the service will know that it has to forward the request to this particular pod application. We'll be developing and implementing this service in the next tutorial. So now that we have understood the selector tag, let us move to the next tag that is the ports tag. So here under ports, the protocol it will be TCP. Then we have port colon 80. So this port colon 80, it tells us that this particular service, it is deployed on port 80. So if any user, he wants to access the service, he will have to hit port 80. Next we have the target port. So target port, it defines the port on which the pod application is running. So if a request comes to this uh, service on port 80, it gets automatically forwarded to the target port 9376 of the pod application. In our case, since we are running a Spring Boot application on the default port 8080, so the target port for us, it will be 8080. Now that we have got a brief overview of the service configuration, we'll be looking at the different service type. In Kubernetes, there are three service types. The first is cluster IP. In Kubernetes, cluster IP services, the healthy applications within the cluster communicate with each other. Consider a scenario where we have the employee producer microservice which has exposed some REST endpoints and we want the employee consumer to consume these REST endpoints programmatically. So the employee consumer, it will make a call to the employee producer and then consume those REST endpoints. Now suppose we deploy these microservices employee producer and employee consumer as Kubernetes pods. So here we have the employee producer pod and here we have the employee consumer pod. So the application that is running in the, in the employee consumer pod it will want to consume the application that is running in the employee producer pod. Now we do not want the employee producer pod exposed outside the cluster. So this employee producer pod, the rest endpoints that it is exposing, it is being consumed by another internal application that is another pod that is the employee consumer. And there are no external uh, consumers that is no consumer from outside the Kubernetes cluster is trying to access the employee producer. So in this case, we make use of the cluster IP service type. 
So the service that will be defining for this employee producer it will be of type cluster IP since it is being consumed only from inside the cluster and not from outside the cluster. In the below diagram I have a scenario where we have three replicas of the employee producer and a single instance of the employee consumer. In the Kubernetes cluster that we have defined here we have three nodes node 1, node 2 and node 3. So nodes they are nothing but uh, actual machines or virtual machines that we have for the Kubernetes cluster. Node 1 it has a single employee consumer pod running whereas node 2 and node 3 they have the employee producer pods running. So node 2 it has a single employee producer pod whereas node 3 it has two employee producer pods running. Now suppose the employee consumer it wants to consume the rest endpoints that are exposed by the employee producer. So the employee consumer pod it will make a call to the cluster IP service and the cluster IP service will then direct this call to one of the available employee producer pods. The service configuration file will be similar to the one that we had discussed previously. Only thing is that the type we'll have to add. So here the type it will be cluster IP. So this type it should be under the specification. The cluster IP service type it provides load balancing at the pod level and not at the node level. So the example that we had seen previously when the employee consumer it makes a call to the cluster IP service. The cluster IP service it selects one of the employee producer pods. So it does not matter the employee producer pod it is running on which node. So the cluster IP service it does load balancing at the pod level and not at the node level. The next service type that we'll be looking at is the node port service type. The node port services in Kubernetes they help us expose our application to the outside world or they make it accessible from outside the cluster. So let us again consider the example of the employee producer application which is exposing some rest endpoints. This employee producer application we have deployed it as a Kubernetes pod. Now in this scenario the rest endpoints exposed by the employee producer they are to be consumed by some external application that is an application that is running outside the Kubernetes cluster. So in this scenario we make use of the node port service type. So in previous uh, scenario that we have seen for the cluster IP the consumer it was present within the Kubernetes cluster so we made use of the cluster IP service type. Whereas in this case since the client it is outside the Kubernetes cluster we make use of the node port service type. With node port services a specific port on every node in the cluster it is allocated to our application. This port value it should be greater than 30,000. So here we have three nodes node 1, node 2 and node 3. For each of these nodes we will be having the node port opened and the value of this node port it should be greater than 30,000. So now if the external client it wants to access the application that is deployed on the pod it will make a call to the node port of that particular node and then this node port it will forward the request to the port on which the service has been deployed and the service will then redirect it to the target port on which this particular application is running inside the pod. In case of node port service type the external client it makes a call directly to the node on which the pod has been deployed. So the external client it can either call node 1 or node 2 or node 3 on the node port. So here there will be no load balancing as the external client is directly calling the node that it wants the pod to be consumed. Next let us have a look at the configuration file for the node port service type. So API version v1 client service metadata name. Then in the inside the specification we have the select attack. Then we have the ports here the protocol it will be TCP port 80. So this is the port on which the service will be running. So this node port service it will be running on port 80. This service it is uh, this service port it is never called directly by the external client. But the external client will be calling the node port. So here we will be having the node port whose value will be greater than 30,000 and the external client will then be calling this 30,000. So here we have defined the port as 30080. So here the external client it will be calling node 1 colon 30080. This request it will be forwarded to port 80 on which the port uh, on which the node port service is running. So here we have here port 80 and finally this request it will be forwarded to port 8080 on which our Spring Boot application will be running inside the pod. Within the cluster node port it works similar to the way cluster IP works. So consider a scenario where an application that is running internally within this cluster it makes a call to this node port service to consume the rest endpoints exposed by this producer then a node port service it will work similar to the way cluster IP service works. So the service will then forward the consumer request to one of the available producer pods. The main disadvantage of using node port is exposing the nodes directly to the external client. So nodes are nothing but the machines or the virtual machines of this Kubernetes cluster and we do not want the external client directly knowing the details of these nodes. In case of uh, node port we are directly exposing the nodes to the external client. So this can be a security issue. Also the unusual port numbers that are used for node ports. So here its value should be greater than 30,000. So these may cause firewall issues.
Due to these reasons, this node port service type it is mostly used for development purpose. Finally, we'll be having a look at the load balancer service type. So load balancer services they provide a public IP address and port that can act as an entry point for the external traffic. So let us again consider the scenario where we have deployed the employee producer microservice as a Kubernetes pod. So this employee producer it is exposing some REST endpoints which are to be consumed by an external client. So previously we had seen that this can be done by node port. So using the node port service type the uh, external application it used to directly call the nodes. But now uh, in case of load balancer service type we'll be having a load balancer in between. So the external client it, instead of making direct call to the nodes it will first make a call to the load balancer and the load balancer will then call the service which will then make call to the employee producer. Unlike the node port service there are no restrictions for the load balancer service. So here we'll be having the external client which will be making a call to this load balancer. So this load balancer it is usually deployed on port 80 or on port 443 for HTTPS applications. There are no port restrictions for this load balancer. So when the external client it makes the call to the load balancer, the load balancer determines which of the nodes that is node 1, node 2 or node 3 should process this request. And once it decides which uh, node is going to process this request, it forwards the request to that particular node on the node port. So then the node port will again make a call to the port or that is the uh, port on which uh, the service is running. And finally this will make a call to the target port or that is the port on which the application is running inside the pod. So in case of the load balancer service type, we are not exposing any of the nodes or node port directly to the external client. So the external client it does not know anything about the uh, Kubernetes cluster nodes. Also the load balancer service type it is performing load balancing at the node level. So the load balancer it determines which node is going to process this request and then forwards it to that particular node. So the load balancing it is happening at the node level and not at the pod level as was the case with the cluster IP service type. Let us have a look at the configuration for the load balancer service type. So here the API version will be v1 kind service metadata which will be having the name of the service. Then the specification we have the select attack ports protocol TCP port 80. So this is the port on which the load balancer service will be running here internally. Then we have the target port that is 8080. So this is the port on which the application will be running inside the pod. And finally here we have defined the type as load balancer. Load balancer it works similar to the node port in exposing the deployed pod applications to the external clients. So if a node port is already doing this then why we should be using the load balancer service type. The answer for this is with load balancer service type the client is not aware of the internal node structure of the Kubernetes cluster and also if the request is being forwarded to which available nodes of the Kubernetes cluster. Also node port it makes use of ports which have numbers greater than 30,000 whereas this is not the case with the load balancer service type. Also as the name suggests load balancer balances the load between different nodes by distributing the request between these nodes so the performance is much better. Cloud platforms like Azure, AWS, GCP they provide out of the box load balancer which can be used. The major downside of using load balancer is the additional cloud billing cost that will be associated with using them. Hope you have understood what are Kubernetes services and its different types. In the next tutorials we will be implementing these service types. Thank you.